Hi, this is Mark Anderson, president of Talent Beacon. I'm doing a quick video today to just give a, a couple of high level points on uh, how we're doing and or how we did uh, uh, coming into the end of 2021. What's going on now with the business opportunities that we have uh, in the near term and what we, what I think uh, 2022 first half is going to look like uh, for the company. So for starters, we had a very good um, third and fourth quarter of the year um, over and above the first half of 2021. Um, we had a 40% increase in revenue for the second half of the year over the first half and a almost a 50, 54, 55% increase in gross profits. But this was just basically about trending business uh, going on the, on the upside. So a couple of things that we've been working on that have been uh, coming coming to fruition. Um, by and large, the, the economy is, is, is going very well. Um, it's an amazing time for recruiting, for recruiters in general, and, and for Talent Beacon. Talent Beacon is a uh, provider of outsourced recruiters, predominantly in India. And uh, also we do some contract labor in India uh, as well, and those are sort of our major um, uh, revenue generators. Uh, right now, um, we have a couple of bigger clients uh, that are looking for more and more recruiters from us, a very big uh, West Coast staffing company that we're hoping to uh, add an additional 20 recruiters to, to the already uh, 12 to 13 that they started with us in Q3, Q4. Um, we have a new RPO partner company um, that we've just gotten started with and that we will hopefully be growing to major NASDAQ traded companies that are interested in doing business in India and building their recruiting team there that we're going to help them with. Um, and one of our existing RPO partners who we are um, doing more and more India-based business with, they are an uh, international staffing company uh, focused in LATAM, um, but they want to do some more, uh, some more work in India. Uh, in the uh, first and second quarter of the year. So we're excited about um, these opportunities that are coming up for us. Um, interesting, uh, just market observation of what's going on in, in from our delivery center in India is that we have, and most companies uh, based out of India have been focused on recruiting out of centers, physical office centers. Uh, with the uh, with the COVID pandemic in the last since 2020 last year year and a half, um, a lot of those companies have, um, including ourselves, have gone virtual. That has not been anything that we saw or thought we could have taken advantage of over the last 10 years of recruiting out of India. Uh, now all of a sudden um, that window is open. It opens up a, a enormous opportunity of working with. Um, recruiters virtually across India. So just the enormity of, of talent that's now available is something that we think is going to be um, advantageous for us coming into the new year. Um, and going into the new year, sort of three major drivers for our business um, that many people are already acknowledging and knowing about. One is sort of the coin phrase of the great resignation. Lots of opportunities, not as much talent. Boomers moving out of the um, of the work cycle uh, without a lot behind that backfilling. Um, the talent scarcity of white collar professionals right now, which is in turn pushing uh, wage growth across the board. So um, that is all pushing the demand for recruiting capabilities. Um, mostly senior level recruiting capabilities. Um, it's very tough right now to even attract junior level recruiters. Um, and in my business, those are not recruiters that are really uh, uh, get, uh, welcome or wanted for you know companies that want to do their recruiting. Nobody wants to have uh, recruiters um, cutting their teeth on their dime. They want to see mid-level to senior level recruiters um, to my earlier point, I think we've got now a ability to uh, find more of those recruiters than we had previously. A lot of that was constrained by space. We had a 50-seater, 60-seater. Um, if we wanted to go beyond 60 recruiters, we'd have to find more space. So there was a lot more expenses involved in that. Now we can really expand 
uh, our teams uh, um, to the nth degree. We really can just expand them as, as, as much as we need be. Um, since we've been doing this for a long time, we're very comfortable with expanding those teams. Um, we've been up to 70, 80, 90 recruiters at a time, so we know how to do this. That's all working to our advantage coming into the new year. Um, these factors of, of sort of the, the uh, uh, talent scarcity and uh, wage compression in the marketplace, we think is going to uh, entice companies to rethink doing some of their recruiting business offshore again. Um, recruiter prices are just off the charts. I mean, people are throwing numbers out there that that are just crazy in terms of recruiting capabilities and getting those numbers. So for staffing companies, for uh, regular trading, um, you know, publicly traded companies, startup companies, um, recently funded companies that want more recruiting bandwidth, um, we think we are in a very good position to supply that type of uh, service and that type of capability. So um, these factors are, I think, are going to push us forward into the new year. Um, we don't see any 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 downtick in that for at least for the next two quarters, barring any um, sort of black swan event in the market. Um, and so we really see that see that our um, or expect our financials to continue um, along a uh, strong and steady upward path. Thanks for your time today and look forward to uh, chatting with you again in the near future.